All right, in the last video, we talked a little bit about some of the arithmetic operations that you should be comfortable with at this stage. And what I would like to do in this video is talk a little bit more formally about numbers and in particular the integers. So when we're counting things such as the number of uh, poppies that you want to have or the number of uh, candy that you want to eat, we normally use what we call the natural numbers. And basically, these ones encompass everything from 0, 1, 2, and so on, all the way to infinity. So basically, we can have all these numbers starting from 0, and then we go 1, 2, 3, and so on. So this is the set of numbers that we call the natural numbers. And normally, we denote this by a letter that looks like this. So it's kind of like an N, but then the diagonal line is a little bit thicker than the rest. So... This is normally the mathematical notation that you would see for the natural numbers. And the reason we don't include the negative, um, um, the negative forms of these numbers is that you cannot ever count using negative numbers. I mean, you couldn't have minus one marbles inside a bag or minus three oranges in a backpack. I mean, that's not something that you could possibly count. It wouldn't make sense. So that's why we only use positive numbers. Now, if we want to actually include negative numbers, then we need to make use of the integers. So the integers are an extension of the natural numbers that include all the uh, negative numbers as well. So you could start from minus infinity, and then you would go minus 2, minus 1, and then you would start at 0 again, and you would go all the way to the positive numbers, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So the integers are pretty much a much larger set than the natural numbers. And this is what we normally use to define pretty much every kind, any kind of number that we encounter in mathematics. So if you have something like a fraction, for example, this is something that we would call a rational number because a rational number is in between integers. So for example, the, the fraction 3 over 2 is the same as 1.5. And since this is not a whole number, then we call it a rational. So basically, we call this a rational number because it is going to be found in between these integers here. So for example, this one would be somewhere in between here. And then the same happens with all other kinds of fractions that do not simplify to a whole number. So for the integers, the letter we use to basically it referred to that set of numbers is Z and then for the rational numbers we use a Q so the Q is usually drawn like this and those are the basic types of numbers that we know about and this is what you sh would have dealt with quite a lot in the previous years in mathematics now in this video we're going to focus around the integers and I want to introduce you to some of the properties that are tied in with those particular numbers so we already discussed that these ones include all the negative whole numbers and all the positive whole numbers, and they also include zero. So we're going to define two numbers, a and b, and we're going to say that these ones are integers, so they can pretty much just take on any value from minus infinity to positive infinity, so any numbers that are negative or positive, so long as they're whole numbers. And we're going to define a set of rules in, in how we operate with them. So the first rule is going to be addition of a positive integer plus a negative integer. So basically this is the same as saying that we're going to have a minus b. So here what we have is we have a positive sign multiplying a negative sign and then basically that's going to become a negative sign. The second rule that we're going to have is a minus minus b. So if you have a situation like this, what is going to happen is if the signs are the same and they're multiplying each other, they're going to always be positive. So this is going to reduce to a plus b. Then the next one is going to be a times minus b. So in this case, what you're doing is you're multiplying this number by that number. And well, even though this is technically how we would write it, 
we normally use the following notation. So when you're multiplying two numbers together, or in this case we're multiplying two letters, but the letters represent any numbers that we choose. We don't actually draw the x uh, sign in between, we just draw them like this. So if, num if the two numbers are next to each other like that, it implies that they're being multiplied. And since we have a negative sign here and a positive sign here, then that's going to become a negative sign as well. The next one in line is going to be minus a times plus b. And this is going to be the same. So you notice that we have a minus sign times a positive sign. That's going to become minus a, b. So it is essentially as if we were to take this negative sign and move it all the way outside of this multiplication operation. And then we would get the exact same result for both of them. Now for the next one, we're going to have a divided by some negative integer. So let's say minus b. And then, well, we already discussed how we can represent this as a fraction. So we're going to put a in the numerator and then we're going to place b in the denominator. And then this is actually going to become a rational number. So division results in a rational number. And this is basically what, what's happening here, but the same thing is going to apply. So if we have minus a divided by minus b, then that's going to be equal to minus a over minus b. And the same rules that we use for multiplication of signs applies to division of signs. So if we're dividing a neg negative sign by a negative sign, that's going to become positive. So this is the same as a divided by b. So these are the basic operations that we know of. We have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we know from the rules of arithmetic that anything that is in parentheses, if there's any operations inside the brackets, we should always do those first, followed by any powers, division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. So this is basically it. So let's do a few examples just to get you a little bit more comfortable with this idea. So this is all pretty much revision of what you should know, but in case you have forgotten, let's say you have the following um, operation. So you have 5 plus minus 3. Well, you're essentially just going to subtract that 3 from the 5. So you're going to have 5 minus 3, and that's going to be 2. For this case, let's say we have 6 minus minus 1. So once again, remember that you're going to multiply the signs together. That's going to become a plus sign, and then this is going to become 7. For the next operation, what you're going to do is say you have 3 times minus 2. Remember, we have a negative sign, and if you don't see a positive or a negative sign in front of a number, it just implies that it's positive. So we're going to have 3 times minus 2, that's going to be minus 6. Same one for this, so let's say you have minus 3 times 2, that's also minus 6. And another thing that I should point out is that we don't always use this cross for multiplication. In fact, a lot of the times we're going to be using the following multiplication. So instead of writing the cross in between, we just write a number followed by a set of brackets and then the, the other set of numbers inside. So this implies that we're multiplying the 3 by the minus 2. So this is going to be more common because First of all, it is easier to write it down this way, and second of all, it makes it easier to read the operations when we have a large number of things, or a very, or a lot of things happening on the same line. So this is kind of the notation that we need to get used to from now on. Same with this one. This one we'll be reading as minus three times two equals to minus six. Okay, so now let's do this example. So let's say we have four divided by minus 3, then we're going to have minus 4 over 3, and then for this one let's say we have minus 4 divided by minus 3. Because both signs are negative, they're going to become positive, so this is going to be positive 4 over 3. And that is pretty much it, so those are the basic operations that we can perform with integers. We have learned that uh, negative 
sine times a positive sine becomes a negative. Uh, two signs that are the same are multiplying each other become a positive sign. And then we learn how to manipulate expressions around a little bit just to know how to multiply them. Uh, we learn how to properly write a multiplication without using the cross term in between. And the division of two integers often leads to a rational number. So you could easily have something like 4 divided by 2 and that would become 2, which is an integer. But most of times, any integer that you divide by a different one is going to give you a rational number. And in the next video, we're going to continue doing some more examples on these things to get you um, more prepared for what is coming in the future videos.